10 things loom knitting beginners probably shouldn't do. Hey, it's Denise from loomahead.com and how about I start with looms. Here is the first don't. Don't buy small gauge looms. What is gauge? So here are the pegs on a loom and the distance between the middle of one peg and the next is your gauge. In the case of a small gauge loom, the space is tighter and closer together. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem with small gauge looms is that they are more expensive than large gauge looms. So until you know that you really like loom knitting, I don't recommend it. Plus they have a large peg count, which means it'll take you longer to finish your project. And patterns associated with small gauge looms tend to be more complex. Well, what about the large gauge looms? I'm good with any brand of large gauge looms except for one. So here's suggestion number two, don't buy the boy knitting loom. It has the worst peg design ever. It takes your yarn hostage. It makes it almost impossible to knit off. Plus, I don't know if it's the bad material, but the pegs will break easily. So basically the suggestion is that you avoid the boy loom like the plague and instead get yourself a set of four round looms from any brand. And I explained this in detail in a video that I created called Loom Knitting Supply List for Beginners and I'll put a link in the description as well as in the video. So let's talk project patterns and my favorite project for a beginner is a loom knit hat and to be more exact a baby loom knit hat and that takes me to don't number three don't change the supply list on a written pattern or video why because even the smallest change can make a big difference to your finished product and the most common thing we want to change are the loom size, the yarn weight, or the yarn type. Let's take for example the rib, chunky rib stitch hat pattern. This calls for a chunky yarn on an extra large loom and often I get the question about changing from a chunky yard to three strands of worsted weight. That's going to completely change the feel and the look of the hat and if you go from an extra large loom to say a 36 now you have a more beanie like hat than a slouchy which was my intent when I designed the hat. Another don't is don't jump into trying complex or advanced patterns before you're ready. A good example is this sleepy lamb lovey pattern. Among the problems is that you'll need two looms in different sizes. It does have a lot of different stitch patterns that are complicated, a lot of separate parts. And in addition to loom knitting, you will need to sew and crochet. A better option for a toy is this loom knit tiny kitty, um, which is similar, but easier to manage. It does have a smaller supply list. And even though it's more than one part, it's only two parts that you have to bring together and it does need some sewing but the sewing is a lot less and not as complicated all right let's move to the next one don't modify patterns that you find on projects or video a good example is changing the version of the knit stitch so yeah there are four versions of the knit stitch and as you can see, the size is a big difference. Here are three little hats and you'll see that although they were made with the same loom and the same yarn, the only difference is the knit stitch and you can clearly see the impact of the look of the hat and the size. The next four are going to go rapid fire because the purpose is just to keep your level of frustration down so you can stay encouraged and stay in the craft. So the first one is don't choose large projects. They tend to be discouraging for beginners. It's better that you just choose something small that you can do quickly. 
Another one is don't freestyle your projects. It's better to choose a pattern, a written pattern, or even better yet, a video because you're going to need help and that's going to get you upset. Don't knit gifts for others. That's going to add more pressure to you. It's less stressful to just knit for yourself at the beginning. And don't give yourself deadlines to finish the projects because you want to give yourself enough time to learn. And when you're rushing, it doesn't happen. Your main goal as a beginner is to learn how to knit. So avoid giving yourself unnecessary pressures in order to impress others or even yourself. All right, let's get to 10 because that one is personal. Don't give creators or designers bad feedback because you didn't understand the project. Sometimes it's not the designer's fault. You're just not there yet. So come back and watch it again. Very often, beginners give me bad feedback for loom knit stitch patterns. Stitch patterns are not projects, so I don't show cast on or cast off, and they think I'm starting midway. That's not the case. The cast on is determined by the project that you're going to use the stitch pattern for. And that's complicated to understand. So I created a video specifically for this and I'll put a link in the description as well as the video. All right, those are the 10 things beginners shouldn't do. Make sure to check out the beginners playlist and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything.